Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do just a little bit more on my Nerf Rival finisher that I've been modifying and filming some stuff from. And it's a pretty small little cosmetic detail, but I feel like it just kind of helps fill out the blaster. And before we get into the video, I just want to give a quick shout out and dedicate this video to Mr. Nathan Mod's channel here on YouTube. <coughs> uh, he seems like a really down to earth person and his work is amazing and it has inspired me to try to think outside the box of what I was doing and it was at a point where I was just kind of getting bored with uh, blasters in general and it kind of just opened up a whole new world and a whole new window and a whole new different way of looking at things and it's interesting to watch his video series they are very in-depth uh, if you haven't seen them but I definitely think it's well worth watching because he really goes through the process of how his mind works as he's like coming up with this stuff and I can't replicate anything like that because it's his mind and my mind are two different things but just getting to like you know some insight into that is amazing and the fact that he takes the time to film these things and put it up is awesome so if you haven't seen his channel uh, I feel like at least people are least familiar with him but if you haven't actually sat down and watched any of his like series where he goes through and mods together some of his blasters you should definitely check it out it is very very interesting and i'm gonna stop gushing and rambling there and just go ahead and get right into the video okay so in the last video i did i went through and talked about the worker stock that i purchased and putting a nerf stock attachment point and I, I discussed in that video, it really only works with the Retaliator and the Recon style stocks. And even then, you have to Dremel out some of this. And I had to Dremel out even a little bit more to fit this particular stock. However, whenever the stock is on it, there is a gap here that I just don't like. So I need to put something in there to fill it. And what I decided on, I was figuring on taking it off the recon, but I actually ended up taking it off of this old Strife, and originally it was there, coming off the back of the, the, the Strife, so that whenever the you know stock goes on, it fills that space essentially and doesn't look weird, whereas this just has that gap there and I don't like it so and the other thing is I haven't finished filling in the top here or the bottom so I'll do some of that on camera too but I was kind of waiting because I just felt like it wasn't finished and I also wanted to wait for this stock before I started doing anything to the body because I don't intend upon putting any stock on here except this whenever I use it I may put this stock on other blasters but I don't have any other stock I intend to put with this I like the way the texturing matches up with the texturing on the grip so that's why I got that and how I cut this was I just simply sawed it off with a hacksaw but from there I had to match it up and gradually trim it down until I got this shape that I wanted and even from there I did a little custom shaping and uh, on it and of course took all the paint off of it and roughed up this area as well too with some sandpaper but it needs to be a little bit rougher and so does this so that it can glue so you probably can't see it on camera unfortunately but I took and put this there and then kind of traced around it scored it with a screwdriver tip and that's where I really need to focus on sanding in I don't want to sand up really any higher than that I want to stick to right there
Okay, I finished sanding the area where I want to put it on, but I am going to sand uh, all this stuff as well so I can finish smoothing this out and getting it to look less rough and sloppy. Uh, of course, I did it essentially at, uh, just for function and durability at first, but now it's time to cosmetically clean that up and make it all look nicer since I want to actually use this blaster outside of my home possibly. Alright, I finished sanding all this stuff here smooth, and then this area here, you can see it's very much not smooth, I just kind of gouged it up as much as I could, even with the tip of the file. And did the same thing to my piece, and it is now ready to glue onto here. Now if you notice the shiny stuff kind of sticking off it, that is the scotch tape that I put on there just to hold the two pieces together otherwise it'll be way more difficult and then once it's done I can just pick the little piece of scotch tape off there and to glue them together I'm going to use regular old super glue uh, not this stuff not gel just the plain liquid okay and it is see if I can find it here cyanoacrylate glue that's the base chemical it's a very thin liquid it'll be runny like water if it's not like that you'll know you have the wrong stuff and what I'm going to do is using this to prop up my blaster here I'm going to put some on each piece but nothing near where this joins together. I don't even want to have extra to the point where it could leak. I just want to have some from about halfway over just down to there. And same thing over here. Not putting on any more than that. Okay. You don't want it to get in that seam. I'm going to put a couple little spots very thinly on here. And now I'm going to position the piece and line up the seams from the two pieces make sure everything is even okay once I have it in place I'm just gonna hold it there until the the super glue actually bonds that can take up to one minute Okay, once it I'll open up my baking soda, and this is just regular old household baking soda, and I'm going to put just a little teeny tiny drop, just a little bit there, and it runs down in the crack, and then I just sprinkle a little tiny bit of baking soda on this and put another little tiny drop let it soak into the seam there and then I'm going to put a little bit more baking soda wipe off the excess sides in
Okay, that's straight. I finished applying the super glue and baking soda and as you'll notice it probably has hopefully it shows it good on film kind of has a translucent look like this stuff up here and next I'm gonna have to remove all the screws and take this apart to finish gluing everything else the rest of the way because I don't want to risk gluing the two halves of the shelves together I've had the uh, an instance like that that has occurred before it was not cool uh, luckily it wasn't very much it was just a tiny bit that leaked in there and I was able to pry it apart with a screwdriver but it was not fun okay I have taken it apart and now I'm gonna take one half of it and begin to fill in the rest here where I stopped Okay, now that I have that part worked out, I'm going to go in and start to do the inside. Okay, and once I get this pretty much filled up and done here, you see how it's kind of white? I'll put a last little bit in there and make sure it soaks in, and I'll just let that sit, okay? And the reason why I let that sit is because I don't want any of the liquid super glue, of course, running into the other shell half. i got to put the two together, but I also don't... <laughs> Excuse me, I also don't want uh, just the fumes and stuff like that around me any more than I have to. Basically, once I'm done gluing, I'm just going to put this aside. And there you can see it lines up and fits in. And yeah. And now that this is done, a little bit more on there. Now that's all together, I can actually sand and blend out that bump there as well. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the other half and get back to sanding. Alright, I finished it and put everything back together except of course for the end cap because I still have to sand all this. Also went through and filled out the top here, but as you can see it's not level. I didn't bother to sand this prior to putting it back together just because like, that's going to be pretty hard to figure out how to get even. So I'm just going to sand it all as one thing. Now I need to point out here that this orange piece is now glued to the black part of the shell, the blue and white parts of the shell. Uh, part of this was to give three points of glue contact for this stock mount. So whenever I have a K26 or whatever I'm running in this, whenever I prime it back, it will be able to take all that force without this ever breaking off. Not that I'm super worried, but this is just an added bonus as well, along with filling out the shape of the shell itself. So now I'm gonna take and mask this entire blaster from here back. I'm gonna cover it with a plastic bag and then tape it off. Reason being, I do not want any dust getting inside the blaster from sanding. 
after doing all the baking soda and super glue nonsense that I just did and blowing all that excess baking soda out like I do, it gets in everything. So I had to literally clean everything on the inside, lubricate it, and put it back together. So I don't want it getting back in there. A solution for that would be just to take everything out at the start, but you end up at the same spot regardless. Okay, I've masked this off. And I've already gone through here and sanded off the top edge and blended it into the sides here. But now it's time to get this bottom piece and get all the ugly roughness off of here and blend this into the grip. For that I'm going to use some rough grit sandpaper. Okay, that's a pretty good start. So from here, I'm going to go and work on this a little more. If I notice any dents or any places I want to fill in, I'm going to fill it in and sand it till it's done. Okay, I'm done with all the sanding. I worked down to a 600 grit sandpaper to get everything as smooth as possible to have to fill some areas. But now I'm going to go ahead and paint this up. I'm just going to paint it by hand with some... Uh, oil-based model paint. Alright, I finished painting it and right now I'm just waiting on it to dry. It is of course more glossy than the other part of the blaster so you can kind of see a line there where the paint stops on the other black versus the black that I applied. So I am going to take some 1200 get sandpaper and just kind of sand that smooth and even that out. Uh, it'll dull it a little bit. I won't sand it rough. I'll just be very light and it'll help make it a little bit more matte and sounded like the semi-gloss look that the blaster has hopefully but yeah I'm excited for this to dry so that I can cap it up and slap on this and see how it looks okay it's dried and I put it back together I still need to do a bit more sanding but I've started to blend the color in and I definitely do like the profile of that a bit more than not having that there. So enough of all this nonsense. Uh, let me go load this up and shoot it. Not that performance wise is going to be any different than the last video, but shooting blasters is fun. Okay, so the final thing I did, I did off camera and part of the reason I didn't film this is I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And what I started doing was filing down the hop up and to do this I used my Dremel with a sanding medium grit sanding head at a pretty high speed because the hop up is rubber and if I have the Dremel going too slow it wants to rip it off and if it's going too fast of course you're gonna shave down stuff really quick so first of all it'd be kind of next to impossible for me to get that on film uh, of, of me going through this process and in between take shaving off a little each time I kept refiring it at 40 feet and once I got the uh, the hop up down a little bit, I noticed an improvement, and I shaved a little more off, and shaved a little more off, and pretty much took two thirds of the hop off off of here. 
However, after taking off all that hop-up, it does fire much straighter at 40 feet. But still kind of the same problem. Between 40 and 50 feet, of course, the rival rounds just kind of zing up or zing off this way or zing over that way. They just kind of do whatever, really. So, just show you here on the chronograph, uh, 127. Point four. Uh, all the shots actually went between like 160, I think was the highest. And I feel like that was maybe a fluke or a misread, but they average around 125, 140, which is pretty high. It's higher than what I honestly thought it was going to be shooting. I was hoping for like, like I say, initially 110 with the K26, but got a lot more than that. All right, so that's gonna wrap that up. Uh, I do think it looks a lot better just having that little bit on there. I suppose it was kind of a silly thing to make a whole video on, but <coughs> you know, I don't, uh, I don't, I just don't feel like there's a whole lot of representation for integration un unless it involves either pox putty or screws. And hopefully, this will give people some new ideas if nothing else this is a quick way to fill in little gaps in your epoxy putty uh so that whenever you sand it it'll look much smoother i know this type of like blaster integration i don't feel like it's done quite as much now that 3d printing is around at least not in the same sense of just chopping stuff up and gluing it together but i think it's so much fun just to do that and next uh, I have some new sites coming in for this and a couple other things I still want to do to this blaster. However, next I'm probably going to do like another Ugly Mod video or uh, I also have a hammer shot. Yes, I know another hammer shot mod video, but I actually have an interesting, I, well, at least I think it's interesting. It could just be like the ugliest hammer shot mod ever. I don't know. Well, hammer shot's just not going away until they come out with a better hammer blaster, I guess, which I've kind of been waiting, actually, and am surprised that with the success of the hammer shot, all we got was like that desolator and a, a rebel for victory or whatever. Like, we don't really get, like, you would think they would make an updated, like, end strike version or something. But no, and I feel like they probably could if they wanted to. And the funny thing is, like, I know the market's definitely there. Like, companies still make kits for hammer shots. I don't know. Who knows? But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.